Hello and welcome to another edition of TSL Talk. And no, you're not seeing double. We're back for a second time this week. Apparently the internet's gone into meltdown. There's been that much excitement. It's been uh, like the uh, final chapter of the Harry Potter movie, The Build Up. And speaking of the boy wizard, we've got Adam Smith here to have a look at the to borrow someone else's frame, it's been a big week in football. Yes, it has been a, a very big week in football. Uh, obviously, preparing for another big round, but the, the news of the, the last couple of days has definitely been Hobart and uh, I guess their, their fight for survival in the league. It's an extraordinary move by AFL Tasmania because we're only halfway through a five year licence and they've already been uh, pretty much given their marching orders. Um, it's, it sets a. What happens if Hobart comes out and wins the next two flags? I mean, it's not impossible. They, they always say they've got lots of money. Anything could happen from here, couldn't it? No, absolutely. You know, it's sort of, there's always the two sides of the story and we're getting both sides at the moment of sort of the push for AFL taste to get them away from the TCA, which I think they've probably wanted for a couple of years now. They want a team down the hill and Hobart don't want to go. Um, it's going to come to longer heads and it has and yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what pans out in the next few weeks. And speaking of the setting up a new, brand new team down in Kimber and the, in the Huonville region, they're not talking about bringing one of the local clubs up, they're talking about starting a whole new team which is always fraught with danger. We saw that happen with the Southern Cats and that failed. The only team I can think of in recent history in Southern Tasmania that's been formed that's done okay is the Central Hawks and that was two entities merging together. This is a whole new uh, team being started up. Yeah, look, it's a dangerous precedent. We all know what happened with the Southern Cats and what there's and history's lived with. I think Bernie Cooey obviously mm. merged years ago, and look what happened there as well. Sort of a fell by the wayside, and look, it's, it's dangerous, and I, I can't see it working. I don't know how you can ask people who support clubs already to go along and you know just get behind a new entity. You need supporters, you need volunteers, everybody to work out behind the scenes, and I don't know where that's going to come from. I've had a bit of a look at the um, AFL Tasmania, a couple, I think it was last season, they brought out a review of Tasmanian football and I think they sort of hinted at a restructure of the Southern football, uh, football in Southern Tasmania. I think we agree that it's pretty well structured in the north with the NTFA and NTFL yep. behind the, the five TSL clubs up there. The way it currently is at the moment, we've got the uh, TF, TSL, the five TSL clubs, the SFL and the old scholars. I think by the time 2014 is coming, if Hobart goes back to the SFL, which is probably their preferred option yep. rather than merging with North Hobart, um, and Kimber Hewen take their spot, I wouldn't be surprised if AFL Taz really pushed for a return of the, the old Hewen Football Association where you'd have Kimber, Signet and Hewen Bull, Channel and Commandy un underpinning this new team. Now what that comes down to though is Commandy being resurrected, which have been out of existence for two or three seasons now, and Channel agreeing to go back to uh, to leave the old scholars. It's they're asking a lot. Oh, absolutely. You know, Community struggled to get a side up, and you know they tried hard. Paul Allison, who now plays at North Hobart as well, you know, coach was going to get Warwick Kappa down, and sort of that wasn't enough to, to sort of get a team up and running. Channel moved because they weren't winning games. Um, they went to the old scholars, where they're still not winning games, I don't think. But whether they'd want to go back, whether the old scholars would want them to go back again as well, is another thing. Um, you know, football seemed to be headed in the right direction with the state league and everything else, but I just don't know, you know, a couple of years' time and it's, it could be looking uh, completely different again. And uh, we read now that Hobart are calling lawyers, lawyers in, which is, you know, understandable, they're going to do everything they can to survive, but it's never good for football when lawyers are involved. No, you try and keep that side of it, you know, away from it, and you know, the players just want to play football and, you know, you don't like to see it go through the courts and everything like that, so hopefully something can come of it and uh, we get a good outcome. Well, I suppose we better focus now on what's happening on field and there's uh, some pretty important games coming up in the TSL this weekend. Yeah, there are. Well, obviously touching on Hobart, they host Lauderdale. You know, a game that is a, it's a danger game for Lauderdale for me. You know, they're expected to now probably win it given where they are in the ladder. Hobart have some big ins. You know, Jake Briggs coming back from four weeks suspension. Larry Owen's a big in from the Mariners. And, you know, they can, they push, they, they, they get up for games against Lauderdale. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I guess that could be a really tight one. Yeah, I think I've seen a the last couple of times and been really impressive, but uh, you don't know what to expect from Hobart. Now, especially with this news, I mean, motivation is such a big issue in football, but all of a sudden Hobart are playing for the future and anything could happen. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as, as I said, danger game for Lauderdale and Hobart, they can lift and it's a game they can possibly win. Uh, I guess another big game is for Glenorchy heading up to Launceston. You know, Glenorchy haven't been in good form. Um, do you think that you give them a chance against the undefeated ladder leaders? No. Glenn <laughs> <laughs> Seston just been uh, obviously undefeated all season. Teams hardly get close to them and uh, 
Glenorchy's just got no form on the board at the moment. Um, North North uh, Launceston come down to Hobart twice in two weeks. Interesting the way that you know mm. the, with the travel they have to back up again, taking on again Clarence at Bell Reef. I covered this game last year and I think they lost by 50 odd points. So you wouldn't think that they'd get close to Clarence. I guess what's going to be important given the ladder is percentage, isn't it? If they can minimise their loss. Yeah, that's right. That North Launceston just look at class below at the moment, and they've probably something that's been glossed over a little bit. They lost uh, Paul O'Shea in the last couple of weeks that um, you know he's been their number one ruckman and probably just about their best player for the season and he's hurt his knees out for the rest of the year. No, absolutely um, and the other two games North Hobart host Devonport you'd expect a big win there for the Demons. Yep and uh, Bernie to get a good percentage booster against South Lonnie at uh, West Park. Absolutely. All right Adam well, thanks very much for your thoughts in uh, what we're saying has been a huge week in uh, TSL footy so remember to tune in to the Mercury online or pick up your copy of the Mercury for your TSL stories.